Okay, well, welcome back. Uh, it's time for another kind of short lecture video here on organic chemistry. We're in chapter six, and we just learned about the different patterns of arrow pushing that we can see. And now what we want to do is we're going to be able to combine these patterns to add up to a normal chemical reaction. And I think I mentioned this before, but this is basically what you're going to be doing for the rest of the year. <clears throat> when we learn a mechanism for a chemical reaction, what we're doing is we're looking at a series of electron pushing steps where, or rearrangements, for example, that add up to give us the reaction that we actually see. And we learn a lot by uh, looking at the mechanism. Uh, we can predict the kinetics of the reaction. Uh, we can also predict any potential side products or places where uh, you might uh, end up having waste products rather than your desired product. So nailing down the mechanism of a chemical reaction can be uh, really important. And that's one of the big focuses of organic chemistry in the first and second semesters. So what we wanna do is we wanna take the four patterns of arrow pushing that we learned and we're gonna combine them all together to be able to describe a reaction. So like, for example, let's just take a look at this one so far. So here what we have is we have an alcohol. This alcohol can be protonated if you add in an acid, like a strong acid, like hydrobromic acid. So now that's a proton transfer step where the lone pair on this oxygen is gonna pick up the proton from hydrobromic acid or hydrogen bromide. And that now has, that gives you a protonated alcohol here. Now this alcohol, uh, if it leaves, it leaves as a water molecule and a water molecule is very stable. So you can easily draw a loss of a leaving group step here where this carbon oxygen sigma bond is gonna turn into a lone pair on this oxygen. Now, when you do that, and we just say minus H2O here, cause we're not worried about the H2O, it flies off into the solvent, we get a carbocation. Now at this carbocation step, we notice, wait a second, this is a secondary carbocation and it's next to a carbon that could be a tertiary carbocation if we do a one, two methide shift. So this methyl group moves over, that gives us our carbocation um, on a tertiary carbocation, which was more stable than the secondary one that we had. But this carbocation is an electrophile. It wants that electron density. So it can be subject to a nucleophilic attack, like by a bromide. For example, a bromide from the original proton transfer here. Now that bromide can act as a nucleophile onto the carbocation and it forms, through a nucleophilic attack, a new carbon bromine bond. And that is our mechanism. And this is the reaction that occurred. So congratulations, you made it through your first organic chemistry mechanism. We're going to do a million of these. So please make sure this is going, going well. Um, sometimes it, you don't need to just like separate them all out one by one. Sometimes two are going to happen at the same time. For example, in the substitution reaction, that's something we're going to talk about more in the substitution chapter. What we have is we have a nucleophilic attack and the loss of a leaving group occurring at the same time in what's called a concerted mechanism. So two patterns, but in the same reaction. Okay, so uh, yeah, so again, when you draw curved arrows, this is kind of a review from something we've talked about before, but it doesn't hurt to hear it one more time to make sure it really sinks in. Uh, you're gonna start the curved arrow from a pair of electrons, uh, most often from a lone pair, but also could be from a, a shared pair in a bond. So like, for example, here, we are starting our arrow from a lone pair on this alkoxide, um, on this oxygen here. That is gonna undergo a nucleophilic attack on this carbon. This carbon is an electrophile because it's bonded to a more electronegative chlorine here. Now, at the same time, this chlorine can leave because uh, you can have this carbon chlorine sigma bond uh, act as a loss of a leaving group. So we draw from that bond to the chlorine and we know we're gonna lose chloride, which is what we get as our product over here. So this is an example of a substitution reaction. Um, so just be careful, make sure that you're drawing the arrows correctly. Again, we're drawing from the lone pair from a pair of electrons and we're pointing at an atom here. So we're, we're forming a new bond from this oxygen to this carbon. And here, this pair of electrons is, we're breaking this carbon chlorine bond and that's forming a lone pair on this chlorine here. So you just wanna make sure that you're, you're very precise with your arrow drawing. Uh, again, here, this arrow is drawn incorrectly because while the first arrow is fine, it starts from you know, your negatively charged, I'd like to see a lone pair here, but that's okay. You point towards this uh, carbon here, 
So that's a nucleophilic attack, that's fine. But this one, this arrow starts at this carbon and points to this chlorine. That can't be right. We're not gonna point from an atom to an atom. We have to always start from a pair of electrons. So it needs to start, again, from this bond here, rather than from that carbon atom. And remember, uh, so, so that's the first step. Then you remember that the head of the curved arrow is gonna be either forming a bond or a lone pair. So we showed here where this oxygen lone pair points towards an atom. So in that case, this is forming a new bond. If it points from an, uh, a lone pair to a new atom, you're gonna form a bond from the original atom, the possessor of the lone pair, uh, to the carbon or the atom that the, the curved arrow is pointing to. So from this oxygen to this carbon. Alternately, you can have this arrow point towards an atom. Uh, so starting from a bond pointing to a chlorine in this case, that is gonna form a lone pair on the atom. So if it's from the bond, you're breaking the bond, it's pointing to an atom, that is uh, forming a lone pair. And also remember that the head of a curved arrow can't show carbon forming more than four bonds because that would break the octet rule and carbon cannot break the octet rule. So what you have to do is if you have a nucleophilic attack on this electrophilic carbon, at the same time, this chlorine has to leave. So in other words, this isn't gonna violate the octet rule because these two things are gonna happen at the same time where you form a new bond and you break an old bond. So you're never at a point where you violate the octet rule. And really any curved arrow that you draw should be one of the four patterns that we've discussed in this chapter. So, or including the proton transfer one as well. So again, we have nucleophilic attack, loss of a leaving group, proton transfer, uh, or finally, we have uh, the rearrangement, right? The carbocation rearrangement. So we just want to make sure that any of the arrows that we draw kind of violate that. So like, for example, like this one down here, starting from a pi bond, that's fine. But then it points randomly to this carbon over here. Um, it's, this is not a good arrow because it doesn't match any of the patterns that we've discussed so far. And also, it, um, it just, because this is not, uh, not an electrophilic carbon at all. It's just a neutral carbon. So you wouldn't call this an electrophile um, or a nucleophile or anything like that. So this doesn't constitute a nucleophilic attack. And at the same time, um, it would violate the octet rule by forming five bonds to this carbon. So doubly bad. Just keep that in mind as you're going through. You wanna just make sure you have the idea of those mechanisms in mind. Okay, and so that brings us to our first sample problem. So what we wanna do is go ahead and you want to just draw the arrow that are to complete the mechanism of this reaction. Um, so what this is basically, if, if you go left to right, this is your reactant and your product. Um, that's kind of a dry way of putting it. It's just you go from here to here. That's not very exciting, right? So um, what we want to actually do is we want to learn the mechanism by drawing the curved arrows in at the different steps of the reaction. So here, down here, as we go step, step one, step two, step three, we're gonna draw in the curved arrows. So we've got two different sample exercises, 3A and 3B. So I'm gonna walk you through the first one, and then in the second one, uh, I'll let you do it, and then we'll show you the answer there. So let's go ahead, let's give it a shot. Let me bring up my annotation guy here. Okay. So first up, we have um, an alcohol, uh, and this alcohol, we see that it's gonna form a new OH bond, right? This is OH up here, this is OH2. So that means there must be a proton transfer to form a new OH bond on this one here. And we're in hydrobromic acid or hydrogen bromide. So it's clear that this is gonna be a proton transfer from hydrobromic acid to the alcohol. So we're just gonna draw in our curved arrow. The OH picks up the H. Then we break the HBr bond that forms our conjugate base. And that forms the, the first step here, the first intermediate in this mechanism. So now it's OH2 here. Um, so now I'll look at the second step. We see that we go from OH2 and then all of a sudden H2O leaves and we have a carbocation. Well, this is clearly the loss of a leaving group. H2O has left this molecule as a leaving group. So this is gonna follow the pattern of loss of a leaving group. So we start from this sigma bond. We're gonna point at that OH2. Sorry, that should be a full arrow. And that describes the breaking, the heterolytic cleavage of this bond where these two electrons end up as a lone pair on this oxygen. And sure enough, that's what we get here on water. So now in the final step, we see that we start with the carbocation 
and this carbocation ends up with a carbon bromine bond as the new bond here. So what must happen is, in order to form this new carbon bromine bond, the bromide from the initial step up here, our conjugate base, it's got to do a nucleophilic attack. So the lone pair from the bromine is going to attack the carbocation, and that forms a new carbon bromine bond, which is what we see right here. Okay, so this is the kind of like thinking that you want to go through when you do one of these mechanism problems like this. So now, why don't you go ahead and try it on your own. Uh, I recommend pause the video. I'm going to pause my recording, and when I bring it back up, I'm going to have the curved arrows drawn on here, and we'll walk it through once again at that time. Um, and that's the end of this lecture video. We have another small lecture video after this, but we're almost done with the chapter. So, um, okay, so go ahead, pause the video. I'm gonna pause the recording and, and let's review. So let's go ahead, take a look here. So step one to step two, we start with a diol, uh, just a dialcohol is the way you can think about it. And uh, we put in acid. So the first step is a proton transfer where one of the alcohols is gonna pick up a proton and form this OH2 plus group here. Now this OH2 plus group is a really good leaving group because it leaves as water. So then basically we lose water. I should have put this in here, minus H2O. It leaves as a leaving group. So this is the loss of a leaving group here. Then we form this carbocation. Now this carbocation is subject to rearrangement because you can go from uh, this carbocation, which is tertiary. You're gonna form a tertiary carbocation, but you're gonna form a tertiary carbocation with an oxygen that's uh, got a lone pair on it. So it's sort of resonance stabilized. This is gonna form a resonance stabilized carbocation compared to the one that we have right now. So that's why we have this rearrangement here, the one, two methide shift. Now, as we can see here, now we've got carbon, a carbocation bonded to an atom that has a lone pair. And as you know, that's a resonance structure here. So you can actually form resonance. And this is better described as a resonance structure really. Or you just get the idea of the steps here where now this, um, we have a, an atom with a lone pair bonded to a carbocation. That carbocation can then, uh, that lone pair, excuse me, can then form a carbon oxygen pi bond like so. Now this proton that we have bonded to this oxygen that was the alcohol is acidic. So a base can come in and you can do a proton transfer and remove the proton and that leaves a lone pair on this oxygen. And you just, you can also just say minus H plus. You don't have to draw in this B up here. It's just like you, you lose the proton through a proton transfer and that forms your product like so. Okay, so that's like an example of the type of mechanism that we're gonna do. Um, there's more practice available down below. And we're gonna talk more about how we know which steps are reversible and which steps are irreversible in the next lecture. So uh, go ahead, make sure to do a little bit more practice and I'll see you in a little bit.